Hello friends. Today we will discuss a very important topic and that is traffic calming measures. Now traffic calming measures is the combination of mainly physical measures that reduce the negative effects of motor vehicle use, alter driver behavior and improve conditions for non-motorized street users. Traffic calming involves changes in street alignment, installation of barriers and other physical measures to reduce traffic speeds and or cut through volumes in the interest of street safety, livability and other public purposes. It is generally used in residential area and urban areas but it is not very uncommon on highways as well. The central theme of traffic calming is to reduce the adverse impact of motor vehicles on built up areas. It is needed to provide more space for pedestrians and cyclists so that motorized vehicles and pedestrians can coexist. It is needed to improve the quality of local environment. Calming is needed to improve the safety on roads and safety is related with both speed and mobility. Lower speed and lower volume will improve the safety on a road whereas the higher mobility and lower travel time require higher speeds and higher volumes and therefore traffic calming generally means to have a balance between speed and volume so that both are achieved higher mobility and reduced crash probability. How the speed affects road safety? A car traveling at 50 km per hour needs 13 meter to stop whereas it needs only 8.5 meter at 40 km per hour speed. Now that is the impact of speed on stopping side distance of a car. The research conducted worldwide has indicated that increase of 1 km per hour in average speed causes rise of 3% in crash involving injury and 4 to 5% rise in fatalities due to crashes. At 80 km per hour speed, probability of crash fatality is 20 times higher than that when the car is traveling at 30 km per hour. And chances of survival of a vulnerable road user, now here vulnerable road user basically means a pedestrian or cyclist, is 90% if he is hit by a car traveling at 30 km per hour or less speed. But this reduces to 50% if the pedestrian is hit by a car traveling at 45 km per hour. And pedestrians have no chance of survival if he or she is hit by a car traveling at 80 km per hour or more speed. So that is the impact of speed on safety. And therefore, the goals of traffic calming are to reduce accident level, to achieve slow speeds and low volume of motor vehicles, to reduce collision frequency and severity, and to increase the safety and the perception of safety for vulnerable road users on the streets. And there are several implications of traffic coming. It improves the environmental quality by reducing the air and noise pollution. It improves the quality of public spaces and neighborhood livability. It reduces the need for police enforcement and of course it improves the property value. And there can be several examples and applications of traffic calming. A speed control zone with conspicuous speed limit sign and a town or village name signs with safety message indicating a need to slow down. For example here, welcome to Moscow, please drive carefully, that's the entry to the city. Similarly, a low profile speed control alerting device, it can be either in the form of a raised flat top section of pavement which is generally 100 mm high with 2 meter ramps on each side of the raised area or it can be like this reflective pavement studs which are placed across the roadway to act as rumble strip. Intersection treatments or it can be a pedestrian facility such as zebra crossing with flashing amber signal. So that provides additional safety to the pedestrians and this also indicates to traffic to slow down. Traffic calming techniques can be of two types. One can be active or another can be passive. In case of active traffic calming technique, it is generally enforced through the design, design of facility. 
It can be in the form of physical warning like rumble strips, thumbs, humps, platform speed cushions, or it can be through a road design, design of roundabouts, traffic circles, or styling of the intersections. The, the basic principle here is that road design should be such that wherever required, the vehicle should be forced to slow down through the design. And it can also be through vehicle design, safe vehicle design, vehicle with intelligent speed adaptation. So whenever the speed reaches to the, the limit, then it should give a warning to the driver and the speed should slow down automatically. It can be in the form of passive technique also, which is generally law enforced, like electronic, using speed cameras, electronic speed or warning signs. It can be police controlled manually, or it can be visually by providing signs and markings and gates on the road. Traffic calming measures which can be taken in urban area includes vertical deflections, horizontal deflections, road narrowing, and center islands. And at road junctions, it can be vertical deflection. When I say vertical deflection, basically it means the speed breakers or speed tables. It can be due to change in alignment or it can be reduction of the junction area so that whenever a vehicle enters the intersection area, it feels constrained and therefore it reduces the speed. And it can also be in the form of pedestrian refuse so that pedestrians can cross the intersection in two stages or you can adopt special forms of junctions which are safer. Active traffic calming techniques may be either in the form of physical warning to the driver or it can be in the form of lane narrowing. Now this is also quite effective method but it should be informed to the driver that a four lane road is narrowed down to two lane road or it can be in the form of a lane closure. But whatever be the case, driver should be informed in advance. It can be in the form of raised intersection also that I will discuss a little later or maybe textured payments where you provide a different texture to the payment near the traffic calming area or it can be in the design of roundabouts or mini roundabouts. Now this I will tell you a little later that roundabouts are designed in such a manner that a vehicle entering the intersection is forced to slow down. Because you put a yield sign here at the entry to the intersection and therefore a vehicle is required to slow down. It can be in the form of speed breakers like humps or bumps or rumble strip, transverse bar or can be a speed table also and there can be some other measures also like staggering of the intersection providing chicken or realignment of intersections speed humps are raised devices which are parabolic in shape and they are placed across the road to slow down the traffic the sloped design encourages vehicles to slow down without coming to a halt there are three terms here speed humps speed bumps and speed tables Speed humps calm traffic more gracefully than speed bumps, although less so than speed tables. And generally, speed humps are used to bring down the speed between 15 to 30 km per hour. And they are good for locations where very low speeds are desired. No, no, no. The speed humps can be fitted like this on the road, or they can be constructed using road materials doing overlay of the road. A speed bump and a speed humps, they are different in their shape. This is a speed hump which is long enough and this is a speed bump which is a smaller variation of humps. It has lower longitudinal span, very small span here around 30 centimeter base and a typical speed bump has the height ranging between 7.6 centimeter to 10.2 meter. They have a steeper rise and fall and therefore the, it forces the vehicles to reduce their speed considerably. Now these are the photographs of speed humps which are of trapezoidal shape or it can be a raised pedestrian crossing which are generally placed at the height of the sidewalk or it can be a speed bumps 
before entering the intersection or at any location where you provide a crossing for pedestrians. A speed table is another form of a speed coming measure. And here you provide a flat top speed breaker. This is constructed with bricks or other textured material on flat section. And their long flat field here, it gives speed tables higher design speed than speed humps. Means the reduction in speed is lesser here. And the brick or the textured materials improve the appearance of the speed table and it draws attention to them and may enhance safety and speed reduction. A typical speed resulting from a 7 meter speed table is 30 to 48 km per hour. And the advisable height is 150 millimeter, and which is generally as high as adjacent footpath. And the slope is 1 in 5 to 1 in 8. They are generally used on crossings or maybe on left turn lanes. Now, raised crosswalk is another measure which can be used to reduce the speed of vehicular traffic. These are the speed tables which are outfitted with crosswalk marking and signage to channelize pedestrian crossing, providing pedestrians with a level street crossing. The height of these crosswalk is same as the height of this refugee island here or crosswalk here. These are good for locations where pedestrian crossing occur at haphazard locations and vehicle speeds are excessive. The advantage of raised crosswalk is that it improves safety for both pedestrians and vehicles. They have positive aesthetic value and they are effective in reducing speeds, though not to the extent of speed humps. The advantages of raised crosswalk are textured material, if used, can be expensive. Their impact on drainage needs to be considered and then they may increase noise and air pollution. Raised intersections is another method of traffic calming. These are flat raised areas covering an entire intersection with ramps on all the four approaches of the intersection and these are provided generally with bricks or other textured material on the flat section. They usually raise to the level of the sidewalk or slightly below to provide a lip that is detectable by visually impaired people also. And by modifying the level of intersection, the crosswalks are more readily perceived by motorists to be pedestrian territory. Raised crossings are standard designs used internationally to resolve conflict between different kinds of traffic, that is cars and other motor vehicles, cyclists and pedestrians, and are predominantly used at minor junctions, property entrances, entry and exit to service roads to provide safety to all road users. Traffic circles or roundabouts is another traffic coming technique and here we place a raised island at the center of the intersection and all vehicles are required to move around the central island and then they exit in their desired direction. Traffic circles or roundabouts are considered to be the safest type of intersection because the number of conflict points are reduced and because of their size and shape every vehicle entering the intersection is required to slow down. They are good for coming intersections, especially within neighborhoods where large vehicle traffic is not a major concern, but speeds, volumes and safety are the problems. Pickens are the curb extensions that alternate from one side of the street to other side, forming a S type of shape. So here the path of the driver is zigzag. And because of this change in the direction of the travel, the vehicle is required to slow down. They can also be created by alternating on street parking, either diagonal or parallel between one side of the street and the other. And each parking bay can be created either by restripping the roadway or by installing raised landscaping islands at the end of each parking bay. They are good for locations where speeds are a problem but noise associated with the speed humps and related measures would be unacceptable. Then neck down. Now these are the curb extension at intersections that reduce the roadway width from curb to curb. And they are very good for pedestrians. 
because it shortens the crossing distance for pedestrians and drawing attention to pedestrians via raised peninsula. It tightens the curb radii at corners, reducing the speed of turning vehicles. They are good for intersections with substantial pedestrian activity and areas where vertical traffic calming measures would be unacceptable because of noise consideration. Then closure can be another way of controlling the traffic where barriers are placed across the street to close the street either fully or partially to through traffic and usually leaving only sidewalks open. They are good for locations with extreme traffic volume problems and several other measures have been unsuccessful. Advantage of this closure is that they are able to maintain pedestrian and bicycle access and they are very effective in reducing traffic volume. Disadvantage is that they cause circuitous routes for local residents and emergency services and they may be expensive and may limit access to businesses. Other speed measures that can be adopted is jiggle bumps like this or it can be angle points like this or it can be lateral shift when you close certain lane at a certain point so that the vehicle is required to bend their path. It can be in the form of deflector islands or median chokers or it can be split median. They all are very effective methods of speed coming. In case of you know, angle point, the speed can be reduced from 31 miles per hour to 28 miles per hour. But because the speed is reduced here, so traffic volume will also get reduced. And this is a half circle instead of providing a full circle roundabout, it can be a half circle also and this can also be effective in reducing the speed. In case of passive or law enforced traffic calming technique, it can be a police enforcement or it can be electronic speed warning signs. It can be in the form of visual warning or pre-warning like signs, feedback signs, markings, gates or even three-dimensional marking on the road are also used in some countries to reduce the speed to give a impression to the driver that there is something on the road. A speed limit, putting a sign of a speed limit is another, met another method of controlling speed on a road. It can invite direct police action if you exceed the speed limit or it can be in the form of automated systems such as a speed camera or vehicle activated signs, traffic lights triggered by traffic exceeding a preset speed threshold. Advantages of putting speed limit signs are that it reduces the probability and intensity of accidents. It reduces the intensity of noise pollution and it also reduces chaos created by large variation in the speeds. But the disadvantage is that it might cause general distress among faster drivers if the speed limit is too low and monitoring vehicles compliance is a tedious and expensive task. Now this is a three-dimensional drawing made on the surface of the road to give a feeling of height of the zebra crossing. Similarly, you see this intersection which is a roundabout, but it is for right hand drive conditions, but a vehicle coming from this direction is required to bend its path so that it can reduce the speed while entering the intersection. So design can be such that it, it forces the driver to reduce their speed. And same is the case with this driver also when it goes from this direction to reduce the speed. The sign of this type which basically tells you that you, in case of an angle here, you should give way to the oncoming vehicle. It's a feedback sign which, which tells the driver there is speed and if this speed is more than the speed limit, then the driver can be fined also. In the school zone, you can put a speed limit and accordingly you can place the feedback sign here to tell the driver whether they are within the limit or outside the limit. So thanks friends. For watching this video i'm sure you have liked it you can write your comments in the comment box